Today, we talk about six-time All-Star Jermaine O'Neal and sitting on the bench and not letting itself decline. New Chanel, Mama and Gucci, got out the hoop to get Been through hell, carry the, carry the Life is a movie, yeah, we prevail Now we do the coupies, don't do the groupies, yeah Got money for bail, don't act like you know me Knock off your coffee, yeah Flooded the road, you would eat them Hack like a trainer to beam them Blow on the money like free I got a flex on the sleepers They trying to do me like season You gotta watch for the creepers I got the eye of the season And the follow by Jermaine O'Neal in yeah. Right now, um, I don't know of any big man in the NBA that, um, other than Shaq, that is as dominant. He can be the best player in the NBA. Jermaine O'Neal has always considered himself among the NBA's elite. Even during those four years in Portland, those days averaging just 12 minutes a game. That's when he would sit on the bench dreaming about the one thing that would allow him to stand out, an opportunity to play. Fourth year came and I was playing less minutes than I played my second year. And I was like, well, you know, I can't, I can't decline. I felt myself getting depressed. You know, I wanted to show the world what I could do. And it wasn't happening. So when the trade to Indiana finally happened, what was going through your mind then? I got back to South Carolina and you know, when I got back, I called my high school coach and they, I think it might have been like nine or ten o'clock at night. And I asked him if he had to have his keys to the gym, you know, because my work starts now. And I was, I was so happy that I was in the gym at 11 o'clock at night working out. The Pacers represented exactly what O'Neal desired, a team willing to give him a chance to be the future centerpiece. He wasted little time dropping his bags in the shadow of Indiana's current centerpiece. Jermaine, when he got here, direct, went directly to that locker room and said, I want to sit next to Reggie Miller. He kind of made a couple comments, um, you know, about the trade, and, you know, I didn't really think uh, that he too much cared for the trade. Reggie was, you know, in a, in a situation where all his guys had left, and Jermaine came in, which was very big of him, and said, I want to sit next to Reggie because, A, I want to learn, but, B, I want to show him that I'm for real. Reggie knows, and Reggie wants to be a part of that, and he wants to make sure it's done right. He gave me an opportunity to show people you know, what I can do, you know, because he gives me, he comes off the screen, he has shots, and he hit back it out and throw it in the post and, and, and see what type of uh, player I can be. He's definitely showing signs that he can definitely carry this franchise, and what I mean by that is not necessarily the numbers he does, but I think the leadership that he brings to a lot of the younger guys that are in here. For O'Neal, there is still much to learn. In the first round of last year's playoffs, O'Neal bragged after game one that he could not be stopped. But given the chance to eliminate the Nets in the first overtime of Game 5, O'Neal stumbled. I know how Reggie thinks of me. And for him to throw me that ball and us being down one uh, with 12 seconds in the game, left in the game, and I got the ball and I turned the ball over and fouled out in the same play. I think that was extremely disappointing um, to Reggie. I watched the tape probably 60 times during the summer. You know, just to kind of keep motivating me. For O'Neal, there's more that serves as motivation. The NBA officials that he says failed to give him the respect of a seven-year vet. The discussions about the high school phenoms that failed to include his name. And the motivation to finally be embraced when people talk about the game's elite players. It's almost been like me against the world all my life. You know, nobody really has really acknowledged me for nothing, period. You know, and it's like until I get to a point where they can say he's the best forward in the game right now, I can't stop working. Hey, I'm Harvey Harrington with Dream Chasers. Um, today we're talking about Jermaine O'Neal. Shout out to uh, uh, J.O., that's my guy, a uh, good friend. And his basketball career was, uh, he had a really good career, ended up uh, getting injured. But nevertheless, I mean, he, he, he did some really good things here in Indiana and throughout his NBA career. There was a part in this video where they talked about him being in Portland. And I believe it was the year before he played more minutes. I, I would say maybe about his third year, he, he didn't play as much as what he did his second year. This would have been discouraging for a lot of players, period. One thing that Jermaine kept doing was he was telling himself he couldn't let himself decline. 
even though he had a reduced role, he still found a way to keep himself mentally sharp and mentally strong. One of the things he said in there is that he just really wanted to show the world what he can do. A lot of times, you're, you're going to be put in positions that you're not going to understand. But if you keep the mindset that you're going to excel or you're not going to let yourself fade, every single time an opportunity comes up and you get a chance at it, you have to capitalize. You have to show what you're worth. Throughout the process, he started to show that he was ready. He talked about as soon as he got traded, he went right to the gym in South Carolina and got ready to come to Indiana. One thing that I could talk about for sure, especially knowing Jermaine, is that he has a drive and he has a he has motivation to be the best. Period. He's self-motivated. He wants to put his team or the franchise on his back. And he does that through just the hard work and the motivation every day. One thing he talked about was that as soon as he got to Indiana, he wanted to get close to Reggie Miller. He wanted to fit in. He wanted to be a big piece of what Indiana had going, especially from them losing that veteran team that went to the NBA Finals. Through the process, Jermaine just continued to work. He continued to get better. Now, you're probably wondering, how can I apply this to my game? I'm not an NBA player. Well, guess what? Ultimately, Jermaine paid dues. And, and, and maybe you're lucky enough that you won't have to pay dues. Maybe you get to high school and as a freshman, maybe you have a spot on varsity that you get some, some game for uh, playing time. Maybe you get to the point where you, you figure into a role, but a lot of us are not going to be able to get that. You have to be able to be a good teammate. You got to be able to play off of what the coach wants you to do, whether it be five minutes a game, whether it be 10 minutes a game, but you cannot lose your confidence. And that's what you could take from this. Jermaine never, not once, let that bother what he had going on mentally. He said that he wanted to be the guy to help his team. And in his mind, while he was on the bench the whole time, he kept telling himself, do not let yourself decline. That's the lesson that you could take from this today. I'm Harvey Harrington, and this is Dream Chasers. Thanks for watching.